welcome back to Retro Alliance Gaming. So today I want to make a video about how to play import games on your PlayStation and also how to play backup games. Now when I say backup, I'm not, you know, advocating you going ahead and or people, you know, piracy or anything like that, but honestly it's an older system. There's a lot of games like LSD which cost around five hundred dollars. And sometimes you just want to go ahead and back up your collection. I mean as you can see I have you know, a big collection of games and some of them are very rare. Um, anyways, the reason I want to make this video is I play imports on all of my systems. So for example, if I want to play imports on my Dreamcast, I just use my GameShark CDX. I pop it in, take it out, pop the import in, it boots up immediately. Uh, even better, with my Saturn, I use an Action Replay, which is a cartridge and it just goes in the back slot you load a game, you can boot it immediately, you can even do it with cheats. Now, I'm a huge PlayStation 1 fan, a uh, favorite system. I absolutely adore it um, during that era. And I wanted to start playing imports because I noticed there were a ton of games that didn't come out in America. So for example, when Sony first started, they said they had a rule for all developers, you cannot uh, make any 2D games. Well, if you look at the Japan launch, there are some amazing games and even some games with no English barrier that you can get a lot cheaper. But as you can see on the PlayStation, this one or the PlayStation O and E one, there really is no ports. Now, I went online and I looked at some YouTube videos and there were quite a few options. Some which are good, um, some which in my personal opinion are absolutely terrible. I'm not trying to attack any other YouTubers, but it's a terrible way to do it. And I'm going to tell you what I ended up coming up with. So, first option I saw, people do something called a swap disk trick, which basically means they open up their system. Don't mind this being empty. I'm currently fixing this, so I just swap this out. You put a disc in, you wait for it to boot, and then after it boots, basically the PlayStation knows it's an authentic game. And then you have to take the disc out and put the game you're playing in and pop it out and put it back in over and over again. This is the absolute worst idea ever. And the reasons why, well, I, I probably shouldn't even have to explain, but number one, you're gonna scratch your games. Even if you have one shitty game you're gonna use to do the initial boot, Taking it in and out is just going to scratch it. Number two, you're going to end up breaking the motor. While the spindle's spinning like that, you pull it in and out like that, you're screwed. This is literally a very temporary thing. And number three, whenever you're going to play a game, do you really want to sit there and swap out discs continuously? That's just annoying altogether. Um, I don't advocate those um, kind of videos, really, because I don't think people should be breaking their classic consoles. Now... The next thing that I've heard you've been able to do is if you have this system, they have a special game shark that connects to the serial port. It gives you extra memory, it connects to there, and apparently you can play burnt games by doing a uh, disc trick to the system, which is basically making it as if the disc is always spinning, which I'll go through in a minute. Um, the other option that I've seen people say is to use the game shark CDX. Now, I have a CDX, I have actually I think two or three different versions of this Game Shark and I tried and it didn't really work well for me. Now there are videos of people using these Game Sharks and they do end up working. So yeah, you might get lucky if you find the right Game Shark and you do it the right way, but still this isn't the best way to play it and I'm going to tell you why. now. One other option is to mod your system. Generally, that's a great option. You put a mod chip in there, you open up your game system, you pop a disc in, and guess what? You're good to go. But, with the PlayStation, uh, Sony put basically a lot of uh, anti-piracy stuff in here, and what it does is sometimes it will actually sense that you have a mod chip and it won't play a huge collection of games. I'm talking about somewhere between like 60 to 120 different titles that you cannot play. Um, so you mod, you're, well, all right. Um, sorry for that quick delay on back. My cat was going crazy meowing. So anyways, um, so there is a mod lock basically that will prevent you from playing certain games. Now, I'm not telling you not to mod your system. If you have a modded PlayStation, that's fantastic. But 
even if you do, there's another way to be able to play those games that are mod tip blocked. Or if you don't have the money to mod it and you don't mind just swapping a disc, I found the easiest solution. And that solution would be the PSX Change 2 disc. Now, I want you to notice on this disc, on the back of it, it says anti-mod chip code, cheat code functions, right on there, okay? No alterations needed to your console, so it does not affect the warranty, so forth and so on. Not that you would have to worry about that right now. Um, the important thing about that, again, is there is a cheat code function where if you are playing a particular import game that won't boot because of a mod, you can go online and get a code and plug it in and it will. And that may seem annoying, but most games you don't have to, and the ones you do, you have this for, which is fantastic. Now, I'm going to give you an idea of how this works. Um, when you open this up, you have a disk, okay? And it's this Utility Driver 3.0 disk. Uh, this isn't some burnt disk some guy made in his basement. Um, it's actually a press disk that you can use. And this disk comes with two other things. It comes with a set of instruction manuals, uh, well, small one here, which shows you exactly what to do on both of your systems and how to get it to work. Now, this is pretty much mod free, but there's one little detail, and I'm gonna tell you what it is, and this is totally up to you. In here, you're gonna notice that there's a spring, and there's also this little piece of plastic, okay? Now, all you have to really do is trick your system into thinking that it is already playing or the disc is constantly spinning so this is going to be shown um, a bit later to you which you will see which is an inside trick of something that you press down which is a little button inside of here um, I'm just going to give you an example because I got to edit out another part of my video anyways and pop this out so if you were to say use this spring for the fat ps1 this spring okay if you're looking at it would go there's a little button right there okay do you see that little button okay this would go in there so you kind of press it and then you would catch it onto the arm right there do you see that and what this does is it presses it down and it makes the system think that the disc is spinning so then you put the game in turn on the system it automatically will spin and then when it stops, it'll say insert your import. You pop it out, put your import in, press start, and boom, it goes. If you have a PS1 O-N-E, there's a little tiny plastic piece. Now, there on, on the PS1, there, right where the door is here, there's a little piece that presses down, and all you actually have to do is wiggle that piece in. I came up with another um, and you're going to see that um, in a moment in the video. And basically, I open up the system, and where the disc spinner is, I just basically taped it down so it's always permanently spinning. This is the best way to go about it and to get your games to play. Also, again, not only will it boot all of your import games, but it will boot your backup games or any burnt games that you put in. Again, for ever, whatever reason, you may want to use them from like ISO Zone instantaneously so now you don't have to fumble around worry about buying all these different products and seeing how it would work basically this and a very simple modification and you're taken care of and I'll show you this right now you're just gonna want to go ahead and pop your screws out there's only four for these okay so it's really simple any Phillips head screwdriver one two three four okay um, and it's basically the same on the PS1 it's smaller and it's not really hard to figure out. So let me pop this out. We're almost done here. And one more screw. Okay. So you turn it around, you pop it up. Now, notice this is where the power button is, okay? Which is right here. And then there's an open switch, which is over here. Okay, now, if you go in the corner right here and you look, this is where the door is going to shut. And this is where everything connects and there's a little tiny button on the side. Now all you basically need to do if you want to go ahead and make it permanently fixed like that is you're going to want to make it where this piece specifically, uh, can you see that, is pressed down. So if you see that there's a little button and if you press it in, it spins. Now what I did was I just basically took a piece of tape, um, a little tiny piece of uh, cardboard and I just placed it in there and permanently press that down and that's it now the only reason I say to do that is because then you can go ahead 
pop your system back together, put your screws in, and everything's completely fixed. Um, now you have it spinning. That is the only modification of a computer that you will have to do. Um, on the PS1, as I said, when you open it, just look for the little tiny button that you would press in there. You'll be able to find it on there too. And that's it. Um, then you would go ahead, pop your disc in, you keep the door open, it spins, and then it'll stop. You take the disc out, you put your import in, and then you close it, and boom, voila, it's booted. This also works for burnt games, backup games if you want to do. Very simple, very easy. Please, for the love of God, do not try to do the swap trick, or if you're confused trying to buy all these game sharks or anything else, this one disc is the simplest way to do it, and I'm going to show you exactly how it works right now and I will be right back alrighty I am back now this is I'm going to show you it's actually working so here is the utility disc okay and there is the PS1 um, I apologize for any shaky camera kind of doing this myself getting ready to get a mountain to hold this up with <laughs> um, and so anyways here we go so I'm going to go ahead and pop in the utility disc now you're going to notice I'm not going to shut the door okay just remember this is where the spinny thing is right there in that corner there's a little let me see if i can get it up close that right there that's where that little piece you would stick in is right there or you just open up the system line it up under there and there's a button and you tape it down which is what i did okay now let's get back and i'll show you so first thing you're going to want to do is turn it on okay you're going to notice it's spinning right let's go up to the tv Start in 1080. Let's get this going. Sorry, trying to make this clearer for you. There we go. Okay. You notice it's still spinning right there. See? You just go ahead and reading and loading the disk. Ignore the sound. That's just that little piece right there which comes loose. Okay. This product is not licensed or endorsed. Insert import game and press start. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pop this out, okay? Like this. Go ahead and put it in there. And we're gonna go ahead and pop in Legend of Legaia or The Legaia, which is actually my fiance's favorite RPG. Uh, we are gonna be doing reviews of this very soon. Amazing game. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this out. Okay, move the book. There's the American version. There's the Japanese version, just so you can see it. Okay. And I'm going to pop this in. And then I'm going to press start. And then you're going to notice it's spinning. Okay. And you can shut the door afterwards if you want. It's fine either way. And let's go back up to the top so you guys can see. I'm sorry if, if it's a little blurry going on there. But instead of capturing it, I just want to show you this live that it works very well. Give it just a sec. And there you go. You have Legaia right there. And it works perfectly. See how easy that was? You don't have to disc swap. You don't have to do anything. The disc is spinning. You can even close the door. Okay. And you're still going to have it there. This is literally the way to do it. I will put a link down below to some people I know who sell this. Um, sometimes it can be hard to find, but you can actually get them for a pretty decent price. And it'll be cheaper than modding your system and do a lot more. So let me let this go for a second. Here's the opening CGI. I can't help but stare at this. This game is beautiful and I have it running through a, a SCART to a HDMI a connector. But there you go. Okay, so as you can see, everything on here is working beautifully, right? Now, that's how it's going to work with every single import game that you play. Now, next, I'm going to show you something else. I wanted to back up one of my games, and let me find it really quick. And that particular game, um, I do not want to butcher the name, so I'm going to go ahead and say Einlander. Uh, PS1, I probably did butcher it, but it is a shmup made by Squaresoft, the one of the only that I can recall, and it's absolutely amazing. Okay, so here's my backup disc. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Pop that open. Let's take my disc out. Set this to the side. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and take the import disc. Excuse me, get my disc mixed up here. One second. 
Okay, and we're gonna pop that in. Go ahead and pop this, turn this on really quick. Now, just so you know, the PlayStations are a little bit finicky when it comes to certain kind of burns. Um, if you're backing up your games, like the Dreamcast, is far easier. Uh, with this, it could be a little bit picky, uh, but um, for the most part, any backup games. Um, now, me personally, I'm a collector, so um, as you can tell, I have huge collections of games all over the place. Um, I buy all of my games, okay? I just like to have backups for the ones that are really rare. And that's what I like to do. And some games I'm just not going to pay six hundred dollars for, and so it's and I just really want to play it. Um, so here we go. Now you want to go ahead and pop it out just like this, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and take the disc, Einlander. Let's pop that in, okay? And then press start on the controller. It's going to start spinning. I'll go ahead and shut the door. And give it a second. Voila. Try to get a better view of this. I just want you to see. Squaresoft instantly booted up. No problem. Let me wait for it to start for you. Um, so yeah, basically my whole point is, if you want to do this, you can try game sharks, but it might not be work for you. The swap trick is the worst thing you can ever do. This is a permanent solution and they give you everything you need with it and little modification putting a piece of tape on there and you don't even have to do that if you don't want remember you can just go ahead and um i'm sorry put the uh, little piece in there and it will hold and that's it it's really simple so it's checking right now don't want to enter a name i just want to show you guys that this is working here we go okay let's go ahead and skip and we got the game perfect Okay, and that's pretty much what I want to go ahead and show you guys. Um, so turning the camera back around, again, I'm sorry for the finicky camera and it jumping all around. Um, that is how you can play your burnt games. Um, this is the best way I know of it. If you guys know of any other way that is the best way to play your import games and your backup games, please comment down below and let me know. But uh, this o disc opened me up to a huge library of titles for the PlayStation. And if you look up a lot of the launch titles, um, one last word I want to say is um, in America, when PlayStation first came out, Sony had a rule, a no 2D rule. They were, they were not allowed to have 2D games. They only wanted 3D. But in Japan, they got a lot of really awesome 2D games. So you might want to go ahead and look that up. Um, anyway, so that's it for today. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so very much. And until next time.